My dad had done about 14 years in prison altogether, mm. and I used to look up and think, I think it was like glamorous. In my mind, I wanted to be like that. I wanted to do that. Be careful what you wish for. I end up getting an IPP. I'm still serving that sentence mm. now, which is a life sentence. See, it's 99 years. So I'm on life license for the rest of my life. I can't leave the country. Can't stay out overnight without informing probation beforehand. Something like that, so you can get a recall straight back to prison. When I went in, I was 20, turned 21. Ended up in Franklin, which was a high security prison. When I got into there again, 21 year old, it was like, result, I'm in the biggest and prison. And this is the, what was it called? Cat, you, cat, you're in cat, there with like cat, terrorists cat, and oh, murderers. Terrorists. It's, the, it's the worst, like he's bad. Serial double, killers. Double like that. How does it take three years to realise? Because I was still that mindset, 21 year old in there. And it wasn't until I started evaluating my life and I was thinking, what an idiot, I'm sitting in here wasting my life. There's me stuck in there like an idiot, thinking like this was, the result I wanted. So I'm sitting in prison, four kids, wife. When it does go off, it goes off probably like they're gonna try and kill you. How we doing, you lovely, lovely people? This is The Men's Room with TalkSport, probably the best podcast in the it world. Will, it will be, it will be, it will be. We're getting there, we're having a go. And listen, we do have a laugh, but we also talk about serious mental health issues. Yeah. Correct. I had a problem last week. Right, so just, just, uh, <laughs> I'm going to start this one off, right? So, me and Razor, we recorded a show last week. We had a lovely time. We enjoyed it and we thought we'd have a nice bit of dinner to debrief. celebrate. We had a debrief dinner. Tell them what happened. I ended up standing, couldn't be, because uh, you live in Essex, live in Kent, so I couldn't be bothered to drive home. So, your, your wife, you know, kindly said, no, come stay, come stay around our house. So, as you do, you stay, you stay around your mate's house in the middle of the night. You need a, you need a piss, you need a wee wee. Couldn't find myself around, so I found a light switch, metal light switch, and electrocuted myself. Ended up, <laughs> ended up on my ass. I got electrocuted around your ass. What was the problem? Well, I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean well, you don't we, know? We do know now. See, the, the kitchen needs a rewire. The sparky came out to turn it off. He didn't. He didn't do something wrong. My wife got shocked on the water because when we was out, she, you, listen, wives do this. Come on, Mrs. Atman, and well, I got a text. She went, I've just been electrocuted by the tap. I was like, shut up, we ain't come home yet. <laughs> um, and when we come home, she went, no, I did. I went, I'm glad to hear. Well, I'll have a look at the break, and I, I think I flicked something back on the spark you turned off. That's yeah. what I think I've done. You've got up in the night, got electrocuted. Only end up with your ass. All I, uh, all I heard was a, ow! <laughs> <laughs> and I've come down, I've come down. Are you all right, mate? Yeah, just been, just been electrocuted. <laughs> well, but the best thing was, I've come back up, I've gone, We've just let you quit raise a rudder. And she went, well, at least it won't run the babies. Yeah, that's all right. So, so now, seriously, I'm so glad that I got let you and it won't run your, run your family, but you've got, you've got it sorted out, yeah. Let's get the rewires happening, so it's all, it's all right. Yeah. So, Ray, yes. this is the men's room. Yeah. And today, we have got a very inspirational guest. Okay. A reformed character, a businessman. He's yeah. been through a lot, yeah? Ellen Back, you would say. Bit I would Ellen say Back. worse, yeah? Twice. Ricky Colleen, his name is. Yeah. Great, he's on YouTube. He's, he's helping people out there, and we've got him here. Have we? We've got him here. Should he's I bring all him? the way, I know, because I can see him behind the camera. He's very intimidating. Is he looking he's, at us? He's bigger than you, isn't he? Oh, he ain't as wide. <laughs> ain't as ugly, that's for sure. Ricky, welcome to the men's room. Come, Come on, mate. Seat, mate. Come and sit down. My ass. I got electrocuted <laughs> round your ass. What was the problem? Well, I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean well, you don't know? We, we do know now. See, the, the kitchen needs a rewire. The sparky came out to turn it off. He didn't, he didn't do something wrong. My wife got shocked on the water, because when we was out, she, you, Listen, wives do this. Come on, Mrs. Atman, and well, I got a text. She went, I've just been electrocuted by the tap. I was like, shut up, we ain't come home yet. <laughs> um, and when we come home, she went, no, I did. I went, I'm glad to hear. Well, I'll have a look at the break, and I, I think I flicked something back on the spark you turned off. That's yeah. what I think I've done. You've got up in the night, got electrocuted. Only end up with your ass. All I, uh, all I heard was a, ow! <laughs> <laughs> and I've come down, I've come down. Are you all right, mate? Yeah, just being electrocuted. <laughs> well, but the best thing was, I've come back up, I've gone, we've just electrocuted Rosa Rudd. And she went, well, at least it won't run the babies. Yeah, that's all right. So, so now, seriously, I'm so glad that I got electrocuted and it won't run your, run your family, but you've got, you've got it sorted out, yes. Yeah. Get the rewires happening, so it's all, it's all right. Yeah. So, Ray, yes. this is the men's room. Yeah. And today, we have got a very inspirational guest. Okay. A reformed character, a businessman. He's yeah. been through a lot, yeah? Ellen Back, you would say. Bit I would of Ellen say Back. worse, yeah? Twice. Ricky Colleen, his name is. Yeah. Great, he's on YouTube. He's, he's helping people out there. 
and we've got him here. Have we? We've got him here. Stack him all the way. I know, because I can see him behind the camera. He's very intimidating. Is he looking he's, at us? He's bigger than you, isn't he? Oh, he ain't as wide. <laughs> <laughs> ain't as ugly, that's for sure. Ricky, welcome to the men's room. Come, Come on, mate. Seat, mate. Come and sit down. Ricky. Welcome to the men's room. How Thank you very much. Nice Thanks for having us. Nice to meet you. Safe okay. journey. Yeah. You all right? Safe journey. Aye. Good, right. good train journey. Take you? Three hours. Where do you live? Stanley, County Durham. Up near Newcastle. So your story. So what age did you start getting in trouble? So I started getting into trouble at a very young age, around about six or seven year old, I'd say. Oh. What? Doing what? Just being a pest? And... Just getting up to mischief, because the area that I lived in, everyone was doing the same. There was no to do as kids. Yeah. It was a rundown area. All the adults, the parents, were out drinking, fighting. So from that young age... That's who you learn from. You learn from your elders, I suppose. Didn't your see no different. But yeah. to me, it was all fun. Getting into trouble. Mm. Lighting fires. Watch the fire brigade come. Going out shoplifting, but didn't have much as kids, so... Getting a buzz out of it. Getting a buzz out of it, aye. Well, do all the kids doing the same, though? If, if, if you're one of them, you, you, follow, you, know, you follow the crowd, didn't you? Of course. You know, if everyone else is getting up to you, you don't want to be the one aye. that's, you know, you, you've been called a pussy or, you know, you're a lightweight <laughs> and all that. <laughs> that's so you don't have to get involved, so that's what that, your situation. That's what it was, aye. Everyone was doing the same sort of thing, and like yeah. I say, it was just a bit of fun. I've, I've been doing a bit of research on you, Ricky, yeah. and, and I, 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 I hear you said in the podcast, um, that you, your dad was in prison. He was, I. You, you wanted to go to prison because yeah. you loved your dad and looked up your yeah. dad so much and you thought that that was where you wanted to be. It was, I. Yeah, my dad had done about, this was before I was born, he'd done about 14 years in prison altogether. Mm. And then obviously settled down when he went with my mum, had three kids. But he used to tell me stories about prison and I used to look up and think, I think it was like glamorous. My next door neighbour was the same into trouble, in and out of prison. And these are the sort of people I was surrounded by. And uh, in my mind, I wanted to be like that. I wanted to do that. You thought they were heroes. Oh, did you know I? What I mean, it's... Looking back. Yeah. Stupid, so what's, what's the first time you, you went to prison? What, what did you do? What age were you? What, what well, I did didn't actually... Get? I'd been into a lot of trouble before I went to prison. Yeah, okay. But never actually landed in prison. I didn't go to prison until I was 20. But obviously, with me being 20, I went to the young offender prison. But again, in my head... Was that, that the ball still that we see? You know, the, the young offenders... The young like, offenders, like, from 15 up to 21. Is that enough? It worse than the real jail. There's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of... Was there bullying and a lot of... Uh, yeah, a lot of that going on. Was there? More than there is in the men's prisons, because yeah. it's full of youngins, full of testosterone, run, yeah. all full of... from different areas, all wanting to prove themselves. So, uh, it was a rare... Uh, it was a rough place. Before I got remanded for that, I was on bail for a violent offence. I was in a house party. Ended up in an altercation with one of the lads in the house. Yeah, um, then I've ended up battering him, punching him, knocking him to the floor. And then I've jumped on top of him with a bottle and smashed his head him with a bottle. But again, all of this was all down to that image of my head of wanting to go to prison. Yeah. I was doing things before all this and I still still didn't end up in prison. And in my head I was thinking like... What have we got to do? <laughs> like <laughs> stupidly at the time, I. So uh, for that offence, the police were looking for us. I went to the police station, it was 12 o'clock at night. And uh, the police station was actually shut. So I'm banging on the fucking front door like a lunatic. (laughs) I'm banging on and I see the police officer looking through and he's going like that as if to say, what do you want? And I'm going, I want it. (laughs) And went and harnessed myself in. And uh, in the morning, come and got us, interviewed us, I've admitted everything, processed us and said, right, you're getting bailed. So I was like, yeah, we're getting bailed. I've tell you what I've done. I said, it's not going to stop here. I'm telling you I want to go to prison, you know, like I'm going off my head. Didn't listen to the letters out. And then a couple of weeks later, or no, it was a couple of months later actually before I was due to get sentenced. Two weeks yeah. before I was due to get sentenced, I had another altercation with another lad in the area, same sort of lad as me, likely lad in the area. Um, he filled my sister in one night, bad my sister. My sister rang me up, crying her eyes out, saying I've been done in. Oh God. So I went running down my sister's house, but by the time I've gotten there, the police and all that was already there. The other lad was getting locked up. And about a week later, I'm in my sister's house. And they're ringing my sister's house phone, griefing her down the phone. So I've picked the phone up. And uh, anyways, about half an hour later, we went to his door. Balaclava was on, big machetes. Booted his door and ran in and just started chopping him up with the machetes. Obviously, the police were looking for us again that time. And this time, when I went and handed myself in again, funny enough, the same thing happened. Went and got pissed up with me mates. I was on a bit of a bender. 12 o'clock at night, I says, right, I'm off. Got another police station, I'll myself in. When, like, when you was younger, it was a lot of, like, a lot of <clears> obviously, 
He said, going about being wild. Was it, was it down to drinking drugs? Was it, what was it? Was it? I was from the age of 11, I'd say about 10. Yeah. I was surrounded by drugs from the age of seven and here, people taking them, but I wasn't, didn't take my first drugs until I was about 10, 11 year old. Wow. Started drinking bottles of cider because it was 99 pence for a litre cool. of cider. White lightning. Then, <laughs> white lightning, <laughs> yeah, white storm, all that <laughs> stuff. But then that's when the dope started coming in. We're all, yeah. started off, it was just like smoking spliffs. Then we're on the buckets, chillers, yeah. bongs. <laughs> Wow. And again, that was the and end that thing. Was the norm. That, that was, was just the norm then. from That's the age of 11 as and well. You said you was a lightweight, you was an outcast if you didn't get involved no. in it. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? Same, mate. She's and I bet you're still going now. It's still going on now. Do you know what I love what you're doing with your gym? So, <clears throat> knife crime, especially around here, it's, it's rife. It's terrible. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, we've got a small boxing gym I have in, in Essex, and I said, anyone that wants to come down and in a knife and pay your train fare, Give you a free boxing session, you save it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think what you're well, doing. So they take in their hands and they come in and they hand their you could, yeah, so you got, and got, so that's an, a safe an, place. I've got an amnesty box, yeah. What you don't realise, and Ricky will know this more than I do, yeah. A lot of kids nowadays don't carry a knife to use it or they want to carry a knife. It's because they feel that everyone else is carrying a knife. Protection. Yeah? Protection. And a lot of the states, especially in East London, especially in East London, the olders, the older kids, of making the youngers carry the knives for them. That is what's happening. Oh, okay. So they, they don't see a way out. And because they've got kid brains, they're the kids still, they're not, you know what I mean? They're not, yeah, not fully out developed. Of, so they not fully make, developed. Yeah. Brains so not fully developed. About, they're not thinking about the consequences yeah. of it. What made you get to this? Is obviously, you, you, you bang, how long was you banged up for? For how long the, have you been banged up? The first time I got, be careful what you wish for, I end up getting an IPP. I'm still serving that sentence mm. now, which is a life sentence. See, it's 99 years. Whoa. Uh, so I'm on life license for the rest of my life. What, what's the license mean? What do you have to do? That have means to yeah, or you have to. Are you allowed to be down here? <laughs> I'm coming down here. I can't, <laughs> I, I can't leave the country. Yeah. You've got to go to pro, uh, probation every month. Speak with probation. Yeah. I've got about twelve different conditions on us. I can't obviously. I can't speak to the victims. Can't leave the country. Can't stay out overnight without informing probation beforehand. Um, can't get in a car and go and drive it without telling them the registration of the car. Wow. Something like that, so you can get a recall straight back to prison. Mm. When you was eventually banged up, how long did it take you being in there thinking, it took, I don't like this. <laughs> it's not such a good idea after all. It took three years for us to change my mindset because when I went in, I was 20, turned 21, ended up in Franklin, which was a high security prison. When I got into there again, 21 year old, it was like, result, I'm in the biggest and prison. This is a, what was it called? Cat, you, cat, you're in cat, there with like cat, terrorists and oh, murderers. Terrorists. It's, the, it's the worst, like it's bad. Serial double, killers. Double like how, how does it take three years to realise? Because I was still that mindset, 21 year old in there. And it wasn't until I started evaluating my life and I was thinking, what an idiot, I'm sitting in here wasting my life. I'm looking at my friends all outside, going on holidays, getting girls, families, settling down. There's me stuck in there like an idiot, thinking like this was, the result I wanted. Mm. But then that's when I thought to myself, like, because that sentence is a parole sentence, there's no release date. You've got to knuckle down, get your head down, and sort yourself out to rehabilitate before you release back into society. Yeah. So after three years, because even in Franklin, we were sitting, we were getting pissed up on the hooch, and it was just like having parties at Christmas times, different things like that. But then I was coming back from the gym on a night time, and I was having to see it, lads, look, or I'm not drinking the night, because there was that much of it on the wing. Um, and that's when, from that moment, I've done a six month drug and alcohol course. But after I'd done that, I felt like a changed man after that course. Yeah. yeah, looked at the future, thought about all the things I wanted. I wanted to, wanted to settle down with me last, get married, have kids. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what I well, done. What's that like an average, average day? I don't know. I said, I, I got Nick once, I was in a cell for six hours. Best lesson I've ever had in my life. <laughs> <laughs> this is at least it worked for you. Know, <laughs> she's going to kill me. She's, well, you know what I mean? I've, I've been rehabbed. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I've done it. I'm, I'm coming out, didn't come out a different man. But um, <laughs> what's an average day on, the, on that serious in Franklin? Is Franklin? Franklin, no, it's up in air. What's the what's <clears throat> average day? What is a day like there? You so a typical up? day you wake up, obviously, some people don't wake up, they just get up after Brilliant. dinner and stuff whenever they want. But my routine or a typical day in there, you get up at seven o'clock in the morning, door gets opened about quarter to eight. You've got half an hour, you can go and get a shower, go and get your breakfast, go and sit and have a cup with your friends. Then the show for work at 8.30, go to work till about half 10. Working could be going in the kitchen, going in the art class, computer classes, the variety of different things. Come back, half 10, you've got half an hour exercise. 
Yeah. Which exercise? Just walking around the yard? Just walking around the yard. Or again, you don't have to go on the yard. You can go yeah. and sit in your friend's pads, have okay. a cuppa. Then you're banged up at dinner time from 12 till half one. Everyone normally has a nap over dinner. Took us a while to get off that when I got out of prison, like still feeling <laughs> still tired. Yeah. <laughs> I need a nap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, you go back to work in the afternoon, two till half three. Then you're banged up from four till five. Then you get from five till half seven where you get like exercise again. Go and associate with your friends. You can go in the kitchen, cook food because I had cookers and, have, and, okay. and the kitchen's up there. But there you can go to the gym as well. So sometimes you'll get in gym twice a day up there if you wanted it. So there was yeah. plenty of gym, plenty of good food and that's what I got my head into. Was there a lot of friction, there's a lot of trouble in there? Like what's some, what's some of the serious, worst, shocking things you've there's seen? There's been some serious in incidents whilst I was there, but them sort of prisons you're all in with like like-minded people. So there's okay. not there's not a lot of trouble. Everyone wants to get on with the time. It's just like sitting here with you now, sitting up a bit banter. Yeah. You meet some of the most charismatic characters you'll ever meet in your life in them places. Yeah. But um, when it does go off, it goes off probably like they're gonna try and kill you. Yeah. The first when I was the second day I was there, I was in the kitchen, and there was a pan of hot oil just bubbling away on the stove, and I was looking over to me mate, and I was saying, "Someone, all right here." One of the lads come in, picked it up, walked up behind the terrace, and just tipped it over his head. And the terrace, all of his skin, everything just peeling oh. off the back of his head. But he didn't uh, give me his juice. He went running after the lad, him and another lad. They went running after him and set about the lad in the pad. Yeah. After it, <laughs> when all the skins peel off the back of his head. But the tension that was on the wing after that, because the terrorists and the Muslims all stick together. Yeah. And they're like the force to be reckoned with in the high security prisons. Yeah. Up in Franklin at the time, there was only about 10 on the wing. But when they got about 20 of them on the wing, the difference is all the Muslims will stick together. So after that incident, there was about 20 lads, Muslims, big, big lads from down there, down London where. And the friction on the wing was just horrendous. Well, we got your locked second down. Day. Second day, I. I was about to put a big lesson to us, but at the well, time. definitely. But again, it was like, it didn't really phase us because of the lifestyle that I lived. I'd seen it and it was just like, I wasn't shocked. I didn't feel. Amazing. Oh, we, so you've done, sorry, you've done that. So, what, 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 how long, so you got out. Did you, have, did you have the plan in your mind that what you was going to do when you come out? You was going to do what you're doing now, or did you? I did, I. I got moved from there. I got downgraded off of that course to Category C. Yeah. And whilst I was in there, my girlfriend had stuck, stuck by us for all we said. But it wasn't really serious because I'd set her whilst I was in front and listen, because she was the same age as me, 21. I says, I could be in here for 10 years. You would just live your life out there. But she wanted to wait for us. She waited for us. Yeah, and a year before my parole here was coming up, I sent her a letter, tell her that I loved her, I wanted to be with her. We never actually tell each other that before. She sent us one back, oh, we still waiting for the response. <laughs> 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 you get a letter back. <laughs> who's, who's this? <laughs> I didn't know you felt that way, like, sorry. Oh, you can write that. I do believe you can write when you went in. So I got the response back. She felt exactly the same. Oh, she was brilliant. coming up on visits and was sort of planning the future. But that kept you going as well, I suppose. Kept that mentally, going, that is, must be a kept really Kept me head straight. Thing. Yeah, she was coming up visiting us every week. Brilliant. And then I had me parole here and I got out after five years. My tariff was four, but I spent a year longer in waiting for hearings and different things. Got out and uh, moved in with her. People maybe might be going down the wrong road, might be getting up to no good, might be out there selling drugs, getting in fights, carrying, in that, knives, yeah, carrying, carrying knives. knives, in that mindset. What advice can you give them? And, what, and, and, and tell them as well, obviously tell us, but how bad it is in jail that they don't want to be there? Because a lot of them, don't, like, like you did as a yeah. young man, thought, that's it, I, no. I don't care, I'm going to be the king of the wing. Like, until you get there, you, you realise you ain't. Well, the best advice I would give to the young lads, lasses, any of them that's walking around carrying weapons, carrying knives, think about what you're doing, think about your actions, think about what that knife is actually going to do. Because I was doing the same carrying knives and I never once thought about the consequences of it. Obviously, I knew I was heading to prison, but when I'm talking about consequences, I wasn't thinking about the victim. One wrong stab, you could stab them once, mm. thinking that you were just trying to scare them off and they could lose their life. They have lost their life, then you're in prison you're losing your you life as well. Life, it, ain't life. Life. it ain't just the life, it ain't just the life. It's, it's, it's the community, it's, 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 it's the mums and dads, effect, dads the brothers it's and sisters. Like the ripple effect. It's it. everything, it's terrible, like, it's terrible. And tell, tell us about your gym. So my gym, again, I've, I went back into prison, I got recalled into prison. Um, well, well, why was that? It was aggravated vehicle taken. I was buying and selling cars at the time, it's, 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 it's the class as twock, taken without consent. Yeah. 
Um, I was buying and selling cars at the time, had my own motor trade business. I got offered a stolen car. One night I'd been having a drink and I'd stupidly, I'd, I uh, bought the car. Stays down and drink again. Drink, drink again, again. I. Because <clears throat> I knew someone that was into that sort of stuff, so I said, do you want to buy this car? I went and dropped the car off, pissed up, crashed the car, airbags went off. I've run away, I left the scene. Six months later, I think everything's fine. In my recovery truck on the way to work, pick a car up. About 10 police cars just come behind us, boxed us in. He wanted for recall to prison. I was like totally shocked, didn't even yeah. know what I was for because it was six months yeah, that had yeah, passed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my saliva was on the airbag and that's what came back. Wow. So I'm sitting in prison, four kids, wife, hit rock bottom again, just totally at the bottom, lost everything, head up my arse. Took us like six months of being in there, hardly sleeping, my head was just totally battered. Yeah. And then it wasn't until I like totally said to myself, listen, it's your fault. Yeah, you yeah, ended yeah, up yeah. here. Took it all on board, said, right, I admitted what I'd done. Obviously went to court, admitted it. And that's when I started feeling better. But then I thought, right, I've lost my license. I've lost my business. I can't come back to sell cars anymore because I can't drive. Yeah. So I got into the fitness in prison. Obviously I've trained since I went to prison when I was 20. But it was during COVID, we were in lockdown, there was no gyms. You had 45 minutes a day out your pad. I was going out on the yard and I was doing bodyweight exercises, got myself extremely fit, lost two stone, started writing everything down and I ended up writing a book while I was in prison. And the book's called Behind the Bars, Ruthless Fitness. And then I started thinking about getting a gym when I got out. I was doing PTs when I first got out one-to-ones with people just down in the car park and stuff. Um, and my mate who'd owned a gym for 20 years, he was selling his. During COVID, he wasn't doing so well, obviously, when it was locked down. Yeah. So he wanted to get rid of it. And he says, hey, I'm going to give you a first opportunity. I think you'll be the perfect person for it. So I put everything into it, grafted me arse off, and the gyms took off. I'm into my third year now, right. um, doing kids' boxing classes. Brilliant. Doing ladies' classes, doing uh, weightlifting for the lads. All the likely yeah. lads are in from the area. Good atmosphere, got the tunes pumping, everyone's loving it. I've got a mental health group that I run every Wednesday, men's mental health. Brilliant. I set that up because two of my best friends killed themselves. Oh. One of them actually found them. This is what sent us back down the wrong path when I got recalled. He rang us up one day. Um, I knew he wasn't right. When I went to his house, he wasn't answering the door. When I was banging on the back of the door, I could hear the keys on the inside. He lived in an upstairs flat. So I set me mate, stepped back, booted the door in, ran upstairs, looked in every room. And the last door I was looking, I was trying to push the door open and he was on, on the back oh. of the door hanging. Sorry, so, yeah, I've had to cut them down, give them mouth to mouth, and then that's when I started drinking again after that. And that's why I've done that stupid decision that ended us back yeah. in prison. Yeah, that's it. But it's that's why I set the mental health group at my gym. It's for men over the age of 18, and it's been running for two years now when the success stories that I've had of it, the lads are coming in the gym uh, every day of the training. Yeah. Totally different. They've put weight on in a different mindset, and that, that's all through me talking to them and Brilliant. setting the group up. Brilliant. Oh, it just shows you, it, like, Everyone or anyone can be in a dark place, a low place. Everyone, and be whoever, a I think and everyone, I mean, everyone's you, been in dark. There's no one you, man in the world, look, woman in the world, that ain't in a dark look, place at one time in life. Ricky, like, mate, when you sit in that cell, list, look, not everyone you think you knew outside <clears> that your mates won't write to you. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, Who's going to come and see you? You feel on your own. Yeah. Lucky you had your lovely wife, yeah. your lovely missus that, that stood by you. But for you to come out from from when you was 18, 19, 20, running around wanting to go to prison yeah. and, and, and getting up to no good, and in and out, and, and doing what you've done to this end, having a mental health group, yeah, having the gym, yeah. right? You are inspirational to so many people out there right. that are exactly in yeah. your situation, and, and, and that's off to you, mate. So, Ricky, yeah. listen, so many people who want wondering, what, firstly, firstly, before we go any further, YouTube channel, what's it called? It's called Behind the Bars TV. Yeah. And that uh, it comes into everything with the book, Behind the Bars, Ruthless Fitness, the gym's Ruthless Fitness, it's all coming into one. Yeah, it's Behind the Bars TV. So yeah. when you are, sorry, when you are Behind the Bars, do you have, do you have you got a TV? You've got TV, do you have a couple, <laughs> couple of, do you get, I mean, they've got a tuck shop, do you, do you, do you have biscuits? Yeah. I mean, what, what? Well, once a week you get what's called a canteen. It yeah. used to be canteen sheets, but now obviously with technology moving on, it's, a, it's called a kiosk where you go onto the kiosk and you type in what you want. Um, you, you can get £15 a week from your private cash money. This is only if people send you money in. Okay, yeah. There's a lot of lads in prison that have got nothing. They don't get money sent in. And you get £2.50 a week off the prison. 
and a two pound sixty for a pack of vapes. So the lads, oh, yeah. <laughs> first mate, you got no uh, 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 Obviously, you can tell, but how much does a cigarette go for in jail and, and back here? Um, back here in cigarettes, not just, uh, to be honest with you, a lot of people just smoking vapes, yeah. but a packet of, or even one one roll up can go for like twenty pound. Mental, isn't it? <laughs> like, like outside now, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's right, on, the, on the services at the M1, did that? They go for that. But yeah, uh, it's mostly the vapes, like a packet of vapes. Yeah. It was like, like I said, they put them up so the lads can't even buy a packet. So what happens then? The lads are having to go and chuck you on because you've got people on the wing that have got packets full of vapes who sell them for double bubble, it's called. Sometimes it's times three, so you give one, you've got to give three back. Oh. So these lads that have got nothing, they're yeah, desperate, so. they're just getting the cells into a massive hole because they're getting double bubble. Yeah. Comes to the next week, they haven't even got enough to pay for the pack they got. And what, oh. about all the, what about all the, all like the wounds and that? Are they, were they good to you in there? Or do, or do you feel like being in jail, like, did they help you in any way? Or did you feel like it was against you a little bit? To be honest, we're in what, prison. What do you call them? Boss screws? What do you call them? You call them boss oh, or yeah. screw. Yeah. Yeah. We're not saying you don't say face. You don't say face. Obviously, you call them boss. The lads each other call them screws. Yeah, so but in the, in the young offenders, it was uh, sir or, or boss or gov. But when you get to the high security prisons, you actually call them by the first names. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it's more of a more settled in the atmosphere and stuff in there. Like, well, so they're, they're okay. But I mean, they're okay to <clears> different <throat> people, I suppose. So you have to, they have to be seen treating everyone the same, or do you have to have their favourites? Do you have your favourites and all this? It is right. You be seen having a favourite. I mean, it's, it's one of them. You've done it, you know what I mean? Yeah, but you're not you just... have got the ones that are all right, then you've got the ones that are dogs. Yeah, yeah. Right, so Ricky, listen. Yeah. You're in the gym, fighting, right? You're nice and strong. You look fit, looking well. You've done seven years behind the door. You've got a 99 year licence, yeah? But you are a tough man. But did you know, Mr. Razor Radicleer? Oh, shut right? up. He's the 17th <laughs> hardest footballer of all time. Now, he thinks he's double tough. He, he thinks he should be number one, to be fair. I mean, he broke both of Andy, Andy Cole's legs in one Not big or not proud, not big or not proud. <laughs> but he reckons, well, you told me earlier, you, before, you said before Ricky come turn up, I'm going to get him out of here. Right, sorry. He <laughs> Thomas, we've been stupid before. No, he said, he said, look, if he went off a little bit, he said, I'll do him. I think I'll pick him up, pick him up, yeah. pick him up. So, uh, Tom, that was... No, 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 I would listen. Well, you would see that Romano was on license, wouldn't you? The man's reformed character. If he throws a punch, he's going back to 99, isn't he? So I think I'll do him. I think I'll pick him up. I'm going to grass him, so go on. No, 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 it's cameras. It's cameras in there. Before you think think about it, you're reformed. Before you chin me, right? Cameras around here, all right? But He's not so brave. He's out of range. Out of range. <laughs> but no, it's where you got to fight. No, I don't have to fight. I don't fight anymore. <laughs> You've got <laughs> Thomas. Why are you stupid? This is a so podcast. We're trying to be sensible. No, I'm 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 doing seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> how do you honestly? How would he get on in jail? Oh, to be I'm honest, I've never done six hours. <laughs> 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 to be honest with you, he's a rare. Charismatic fella, so I think he would get on well. I wouldn't want, I wouldn't yeah. want to find out, but I think they're bands. I think people like him in the bands. I think they would like his banter, so I think he would probably get on all right. As long as he gave me a bit of money, I would look after him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, imagine, imagine do you, you have that, though? Do you have that? Do you have that? Oh, you do, I do. Yeah. Yeah. You cool. got, you have your, your, yeah. what, what do you call it? Your protection. Protection money. Your, yeah, do you? So you <laughs> got, are you people bullied into it, though? The weaker people get bullied Well, into some it. people will come up and see a like, well, you look after us, and then obviously people think, well, I'll take advantage of the situation. If the person's got money, yeah. then we'll pay them to look after them. I'd, I'd pay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, so this is what we do in London. This is the arm <laughs> man test, yeah? yeah? These are, I love these, Jenny Deals. Yeah. Ricky, if you've had it before, there's a bone in the middle, so suck them, mate. Don't, because you end up cutting your mouth. <laughs> oh. Right, so come on then. Go on, you've got to eat one each. So I'll go that one, look. So there's the bone there. You can feed it. Go on, mate, now. Look at that. Hold up. You've got to suck all the eel off of the bun. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's back in slavery. Uh, what was it? He's down in the jungle. Got the bun. Yeah. How do you act like? Lovely. Bun! What's this stuff? Didn't like it. They're quite nice, them. They're all right, mate. So, how's that compared to prison food, you know, mate? <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I'll tell you something that was actually worse than that in Franklin. Was it? I used to eat a tin of pilchards every day just for the protein. 
<laughs> Cold pilchards. Mm. Cold pilchards out the tin. There's eight, eight of them yeah, that just look like a fish. Obviously, like the <laughs> still got the skin on and everything. Yeah, that one, that one. Do you like pilchards nah. themselves? Nah. One grand head. Sardines and that. Yeah, I like sardines. Right? Pilchards. 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 One oh. grand head, you have pilchards on toast, dip it in his cup of tea and eat it, right? And then you used to get a spoon with all the floating pilchards on top of his cup of tea and eat it. Well, there was eight fillets inside of it, so it was like 80 yeah. grams of protein in a tin. And you would do anything in prison to get the protein. <laughs> so four times a day, I'll be like that with the fish. Oh. <laughs> Can you make a curry in a kettle? I can't, I. I've got it all in my book. Yeah. It's in my book, actually. It's me. Yeah. Kettle, kettle curry. Kettle. You might carry in a kettle. Get a little That's travel kettle. Good, you? Yeah. Just boil it out. Fry your onions on the bomb, chuck your stuff in. Yeah. <laughs> what do we need a cooker for? <laughs> <laughs> Boss. Ricky, mate, it's been inspirational, honestly. Thank you very much. You helped a lot of people. Good luck with your life. Pleasure. Mate. And good say hello to your missus and the kids. Right? Will do. Thank, Thank you very much. much. But. but. Face off time. Why are, you, why are you trying to get me in trouble? <laughs> go on. Come on, let's have it. Let's go, come let's on. Have it. <laughs> That's enough of that. That's enough of that. Right, listen, listen. That was the Men's Room podcast. Get yourself <laughs> over there, you. Listen, make sure you watch it, download it. I know, subscribe to it, steal it, like it. It doesn't matter. Two lovely fellas on a lovely podcast. It's all about men's mental health. Come on, let's man. have it. Good luck. <laughs> I'm out in Franklin. Was it? I used to eat a tin of pilchards every day just for the protein. <laughs> Cold pilchards. Mm. Cold pilchards out the tin. There's eight, eight yeah, of them that just look like a fish. Obviously, like the <laughs> still got the skin on and everything. Yeah, no, I love them. Do you like pilchards nah. themselves? Nah. One grand head. Sardines and that. Yeah, I like sardines. Right? That's pilchards. pilchards. One oh. grand head. You have pilchards on toast, dip it in his cup of tea and eat it. Right? And then you used to get a spoon with all the floating pilchards on top of his cup of tea and eat it. Well, there was eight fillets inside of it, so it was oh. like 80 yeah. grams of protein in a tin. And you would do anything in prison to get the protein. <laughs> so four times a day, I'll be like that with a fish. Oh. <laughs> Can you make a curry in a kettle? I can't, I. I've got it all in my book. Yeah. It's in my book, actually. It's me. Yeah. Kettle kettle kettle. Kettle. You might carry in a kettle. Get a little That's travel kettle. Good, you? Yeah. Just boil it out. Fry your onions on the bomb, chuck your stuff in. Yeah. <laughs> what do we need a cooker for? <laughs> <laughs> Boss. Ricky, mate. It's been inspirational, honestly. Thank you very much. You're helping a lot of people. Good luck with your life, Pleasure. Pleasure. mate. Good to say hello to your missus and the kids. Right? Will do. Thank, Thank you very you much. Doing. But. Uh, oh. Face off time. Why are, you, why are you trying to get me in trouble? <laughs> come on. Come on, then let's have it. Let's go. Come let's on. have it. <laughs> That's enough of that. That's enough of that. Right, listen, listen. That was the Men's Room podcast. Get yourself <laughs> over there, you. Listen, make sure you watch it, download it. I oh, know, subscribe to it, steal it, like it. It doesn't matter. Two lovely fellas on a lovely podcast. It's all about men's mental health. Come on, let's have it. Good dance. <laughs>